I want to talk about trauma bonding in academia. And I think that this is a very real thing that happens. First of all, I'm going to talk about two stories. And then I'm going to go into talking about what you can do about that so that you can have some courage to do things that you would love to actually do. So if you don't know me, I'm Professor Dave Maslach. I'm a associate professor and I teach business, but I'm very well aware of the academic game. You can watch a whole bunch of videos on this. The first story that I wanna to talk to you about is of the idealistic world that we think about academia, that we think that it's about the scientific process and how we imagine it to be, where you go about it experimenting, and as you experiment, you make predictions on the future, and then you go and test those particular futures and what that might be, and then finally, you disseminate the knowledge that you have and you tell other people. And that is a very much an idealistic story. Now, the other thing component with that, within that particular framework is that people are cooperative. They want to help you out, that they are there to be as supportive as they possibly can, and that they will collaborate and cooperate at any moment with this particular story. Now, I'm gonna tell you probably perhaps something that resonates with people that are in the field and understand what is actually going on. This is a story where instead of the scientific method, you don't know what the heck you're doing. And you're putting together hodgepodges of knowledge that are coming from different areas and you don't really quite understand what you wrote and what other people wrote. And then you go about of trying to test something in somewhat of a real world, realizing that it's completely flawed. And then you go about and realize that the tests that you actually have are extremely imperfect and you can't convince other people that these tests actually are valid. And then you go about and start trying to tell your story and what you're trying to do. And the findings that you found, and virtually everybody looks at you and doubts you and says that that is a terrible idea and you should have not have done that at any moment of your, of the entire process. Now, this story along the way is very much the real story about what goes on in my view Perhaps it's different for your view, but we don't know what we're doing. The whole process is marred with uncertainty and ambiguity. You haven't got a clue whether you've actually written anything that was worth a dime or not. And then on top of it, you have a bunch of discerning people. And I'm saying discerning in a very polite way. It's probably not that at all. Where they don't trust they are incentivized to look out for their career and to climb the corporate ladder the way that anybody would legitimately. And the corporate ladder in this particular scenario is a university environment. And there is a lot of politics and um, political playing that happens and it's a challenging process. Now this story, this less than ideal story is more realistic because this is what people do in all areas of our lives. We don't really know what is going on. And even the people that are closest to you are going to doubt you with what you're doing. There's a reason why we have unbelievable number of people that are in divorce law and doing things with divorce law. Even people close to you have challenges with trust issues and, and trying to figure you out. So why should somebody that is distant, that doesn't know you, that 
you know, that is really far from who you are. Even your own mother and your father often don't believe what you're doing. Why would you presume that other people that are far, probably perhaps far smarter, I don't know, perhaps, why would you presume that they would be very sympathetic with what you're actually doing? I want you to sort of take the step back and, and think about what this actually does then. For a lot of people, this creates a trauma bond, an attachment that is perhaps unnecessary towards trying to convince other people and, and believing people or feeling a lot of um, emotion with people that are part of the particular process because it's challenging. And so even though what you're doing is not necessarily an easy thing, the more that you do it, the more that you become attached to it, the more that you have stronger feelings for it, the more that you realize that, hey, this is actually a good thing. Um, and this, this is a challenging thing that I think. And a lot of people that are in the process, they quit or they go do something else. They, they find other things. And that even goes for those that are within the academic game. You don't see a lot of people that, that stay research active, what's called research active for very long. Many people stop because it is challenging. It is a hard process. You don't know what you're doing and you're trying to convince other people that doubt you the whole time. So what can you do? How can you have courage? What does that feel like? A huge part of what we need to do, and I, <clears throat> I've learned, sorry, I have learned that we need to take a step back and detach, not take yourself seriously throughout the process. Realize all of this is a game. It's a political game where people are playing different political games and realize for what it's worth, look at it for what exactly it's actually worth and then feel good about yourself every day. Remind yourself every single day that you are a good human being that's trying to do good things. And I genuinely believe that a lot of people do do that. There's a lot of nefarious people out there, obviously, but there's also a lot of good people that are out there. And question yourself, and if I do this, if, 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 I'm, if I'm being helpful, what might that look like? And at what stage might that actually look like? So being helpful, as you might think about, it might be, let's give a whole bunch of feedback and be very critical um, and challenging throughout the process. In fact, that might be the worst thing that you could possibly do. It might be just having a cup of coffee. It might be just sitting around and having a conversation. It might be just saying, I'm good, you're good. Let's just keep going. I think we need to take a step back and realize what are we trying to do here? How are we trying to make a better world collectively? Is it a bunch of people that are trying to doubt other people? Is it a bunch of people that um, are untrustworthy? Because I ultimately think a lot of people are. In fact, I don't trust. If you were to ask me in my research methods course, do I trust research papers? And my uniform answer is no. But does that not mean that I'm going to stay, stay there and I'm going to say, you know what, I'm very supportive of what you're doing and I'm going to try as damnedest to my ability to make what you're doing better. And that may be not saying as much as I should at different times. That may be looking at other people and just giving them a smile. That may be me taking a step back from all of this and then thinking in my head, thinking in this ticker and in this ticker right here, thinking in my head where I take a step back and I say, I'm good. I'm happy with who I am. And hopefully you do the same thing where you take a step back and you say, I'm good. I'm happy with where I am. I look around and yeah, I don't have a heck of a lot of stuff, but I'm happy. And that's all that matters.
and I'm going to try to make other people that are happy around me a little more happy, but not to, not to the extent where I get that trauma bonding, where, where I feel like I need to impress other people, where I feel like I need to, um, do things because I'm afraid of what other people are saying. Whenever I get that, that pit in my stomach now, I fight back against it. I used to get it all the time. It'd be somebody that was more prestigious, quote unquote, prestigious than me, um, you know, just bumping into people. And I push back against it and I say, you know, they're just putting on their pants just like I am. And despite the fact that they might have all this prestige and all this kind of stuff behind them, I'm going to take a step back and I'm going to say, I'm just as good. And that's a good thing. That's helpful. When you take a step back and you realize deep down inside, you're just as good. You're just in a different moment in time that you have inner strength that you have courage. It's when a lot of things change in your life. It just does. You don't have to impress anybody. You can tell the truth. You just be you. I think that's a lot more important than having all of this political gaming and all this kind of stuff. Just be you. Try to be kind to yourself, whatever that might be. That might mean that you go out and go for a walk. That might mean that you go get some exercise. That might mean that you maybe get a dog or something, whatever it is, that has nothing to do with impressing people, has everything to do with you being you. And become very, very aware of how important it is for you to be good to yourself, and then once you're good to yourself, you try to be good to other people. And you don't worry about all of that stuff, that nonsense that's going on. All right. Take care. And have a wonderful day. Bye.